Hello, friends of the internet. I'm thrilled to be here today with Walker Kalen and Camille Trust, the director and pop star behind I Need Your Love, which is having its world premiere at Tribeca 2024 on, I believe, Sunday, June 9th at the Village East Angelica at 6 p.m., followed by screenings, I believe, at the Angelica two days later on that Wednesday. And then, yeah, there's one at the AMC 19th and then Angelica again. So, and that's under the Now Indie Episodic program, which I recently learned from festival programmers. And correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. I believe that also goes to the Tribeca Creators Market, if I'm not mistaken, to get you indie indie pilots sold. Mm -hmm. You're getting a shot at us before the big sale. Awesome. And for those who want a little bit more info on I Need Your Love, here's a brief synopsis from the Tribeca website itself. It's a bittersweet comedy about pop singer Camille's struggle to make a name for herself in New York's. So with that synopsis out of the way, welcome, Walker, Camille. It's great to have you on. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So first things first, the obvious question, and this can be a question for you, Walker or Camille, whoever, where did the idea for the, I guess, show come from? I'll start first. I'm looking at top bottom left of my screen. That's Camille. Oh, I was like, yeah, yeah. On mine. <laughs> so take it away, Camille. Walker and I met in 2012 by chance during Hurricane Sandy, and we've just been really close friends ever since. And he's just sort of been witness to my hustle and my struggle and my successes and just everything that I've been through. And he's sort of also just been a sounding board to my emotions through all of these years as well and a source of... <laughs> comfort and whatnot. But yeah, so I think then last year, he sort of came to me with the idea of, well, he's always been a filmmaker. And I've always just been like, we've never worked together until last year. And of just with this idea of like, I was always telling him like, you let me know when you're ready to, to do something starring me. But I didn't realize it was actually going to be actually me. <laughs> so, so yeah, he proposed me with this idea and had a rough sketch of um, an episode or what the arc was going to be. And then we finessed it together. My feeling is my background is in writing. And that's always been the most important thing to me. And my way into the world of film and theater has been through writing and to get things produced as a writer especially if you're a writer who is not prominent or famous or have lots of big credits to your name it's really hard to get things made so even if you can option something or make little deals here and there a lot of the vast majority of work just never gets produced and so i was feeling really frustrated about that and wanting to take things into my own hands and to acknowledge that I feel frustrated and insecure about where I, I want to be making things. And I don't feel like that I've done that to the degree which I would like to and I think I'm capable of. Been very close to Camille and observing her for the past decade plus. It's a much more public way of creating art that she does and as an independent artist she has to wear so many hats for her own career she doesn't have a like 20 person team around her to make things happen she has to make it all happen on her own and she has to do that in front of an audience literally so i could really empathize with her it's much different like approaches to to the way that we like think about making art and making things but I definitely just feel a real kinship to her. And that was my way into the show. It's like just the themes of the show and the energy of the show. Like it wouldn't work if this was purely like, let's just come up with funny stories of things that ha maybe happened to Camille. There has to be some real connection to the material. And not only me and Camille, but every single person who worked on this with us, the reason they worked on it wasn't because we were paying them big bucks because we weren't. We paid Definitely people not. good. But it was because they connected to and related to the material. And it's and not it's not only funny, we think and we hope and we know, but that it has some kind of depth to it through the honesty. 
Yeah, and you know, it's funny you mention the writing aspect of it because I'm actually interviewing somebody today. I believe, what is his name? Jeremy Mitchell, right after this. And one of the topics we're talking about today is, I guess he sold a feature to Lionsgate, like his first, I think, yeah, something about selling a feature to Lionsgate with it only being his like second or third. So I'll, I'll definitely have to ask the different side of that for him because... Yeah. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting, uh, just given that interview I have today. But going back to you, Camille, um, I know a lot of this is kind of, I don't want to say stories from your career, but it's obviously inspired by, I'm sure, a lot of the stories from your career. How did you come into this as a musician trying to kind of relay these stories and also kind of jumping off what what walker said how how, the, how you two work together to kind of adapt those stories in a way that makes sense for i guess this format yeah i think because i've been i mean i my degree my college degree is in theater so i definitely studied acting in university and i did like student films and such so I have some sort of idea of how to like act on camera. I think the stories that we wanted to create again are just stories that we feel are relatable and stories that can sort of resonate with people with these themes of vulnerability and self-doubt. And I think something that's important to note too is in the series, like it's not like, and then this crazy thing happens and she gets the part, you know, like that doesn't happen. And think about the fucking 95% of people that are still out there struggling for their life still just holding on to this dream and being like, I hope to God one day this happens for me because honestly, I have no other choice. So I'm doing it, if do or die, baby. And so I sort of just want to show that and sort of, yeah, I think, yeah, kind of echoing what, what Walker was saying about vulnerability and just making things resonate with people. Brain is rebooting, so give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, but my final question would be, um again another obvious one as as it was the first one but this is your world premiere congratulations by the way if i didn't already say that and but the question is like what do you want the general audience who's maybe not looking at this for distribution you know the general public is what i mean there what do you want them to take out of it i know you talked about the relatability of the stories therein and that how does it feel to be at tribeca you know Walker. Tribeca feels amazing. Everyone there has been incredibly generous and supportive of us. And the festival hasn't even started yet. So I am super grateful. I know that Camille is, is as well. How do we want people to respond to this? I mean, besides just like snorting their milk, spitting the milk out of their nose from laughing, which we hope <laughs> it's we hope it's and funny. snorting. Milk it's got to be funny. But like, no, we want this story to feel to connect i know this already and that it connects with people from very different like worldviews and very different walks of life and it's not um this is not a show for people like in the music industry that's you know it happens to feature a lot of music industry stuff but that's like not who the show is for great if they like it but the show is for people who are like open to flawed complex and hilarious characters camille yeah i think echoing everything you're saying for sure and i think it's really special and, and you know not always done where the person who's telling the story is who it's actually happening to and they're playing themselves obviously that just happened with baby reindeer which was extremely amazing but but you don't see that so often where they're truly playing themselves and they're truly reliving the character. And we're sort of introducing that theme as well with this and trying to do that too. And it's vulnerable, it's real, and it's 100% honest. And I just know that honesty really cuts through. You got to go to the heartstrings, baby. But also, you know, I'm a funny gal, so might as well use that too. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I know we're running short on time, but... I want to thank you both for 
taking the time out of your day uh, Thank you. what, uh, of what I'm sure is an insane interview schedule based off what I know from the three previous Tribeca's I've covered. And for those who want to catch it and are going to be in New York for Tribeca, uh, the show times are J- Sunday, June 9th at 6 p.m. at the Village East by Angelica, Wednesday, June 12th at 815 at the AMC 19th Street on East 6th, and then Sunday, June 16th at 2.15 p.m. And that'll be the last screening of I Need Your Love for, at Tribeca. Bring your but, fathers for Father's Day. Again, thank you both so much uh, for taking the time out of your insanely busy schedule. Thank you so much. Thank you, Austin. So lovely to meet you.